Hey, Sean, um, you know, when you were making your decisions as to whether or not to play this season, you talked about wanting clarity from the Big Ten as far as their procedures and things like that. So I guess just what's your reaction to what's going on um, with the outbreak at Wisconsin and seeing that that resulted in a, a, a game being canceled? Um, what, what, I guess what is your level of confidence in the Big Ten right now? I can't really worry about other teams. I can only worry about my team. So with my team, I'm very confident. Um, everybody's taking the protocols day by day, doing what they're supposed to do, staying with people wearing their masks. So um, I just can't worry about other teams. I only worry about what's happening here right now. Coach Day the other day said that it's still something that he's been pounding into you guys. But what are you individual players doing to hold each other accountable? Because obviously the coaches aren't always around. So what sort of message is there? Are you ever in a position where you're telling a guy, don't do this, or are you seeing that happening around the team? Yeah, definitely. Like a lot of leaders just telling young guys to stay in. I know it's our freshman year, you want to go out, go have fun, but just sacrifice just a little bit of too much just for us. And um, they, they've been they've been doing well right now. So just we keep on doing that. Keep on talking to everybody, just making sure we stay inside, wear our masks, if we go out to get some food or anything. Just make sure we wear our masks everywhere we go. Um, at the end of the day, it's COVID-19. You just, you just don't know how, how people's getting it. Um, so at the end of the day, as long as I feel like people just wear their masks, we'll be straight. Up next, Andy Anders. Uh, yeah, Sean, I was uh, just curious. You guys had some trouble against the tight ends with Nebraska. Uh, obviously, Pat Firemuth is a big challenge this weekend at that position. Without getting too much away, what have you guys done to adjust to that part of the passing game? To be honest, we haven't done nothing yet um, in, our, in our play scheme. We just we just had practice yesterday, so we haven't really done nothing yet. Um, we talked about the tight end a couple of times, talked with Pete, talked with Baron, um, talked with Prop. And then myself, we all talked about just the tight end, like different ways we could guard him and stuff like that. But we haven't really put no scheme in there. What did you talk about with Proc and Warner? You mentioned talking to those guys. What was kind of the consensus about that? Just um, the tight end, how, how good he is. He, he's a very elite tight end. Um, really doesn't like to block. He could, he'll block, but doesn't like to block. Um, has great hands. Guys run great routes. He did a stick knot last week against Indiana. That was, like, perfect. So, Oh, just 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 helping them boys out and just giving them some tips and stuff from last year. Thank you. Uh, next, Austin Ward. John, uh, I know that that was a, a tough play and the coverage was good, but you didn't hold on to the football for that pick. Uh, considering how you know maybe few opportunities you might have this year, uh, were you kicking yourself over that? How did you uh, re respond to putting it on the ground? Uh, I, I definitely was kind of hard on myself about dropping it, but at the end of the day, um, it's a PPQ, but um, I got my hands on the ball. Um, like I said, it's just for the team, it's not for myself. Um, I'm back, I'm back, and that's just for the team, it's not for myself. So really just looking forward to this week. Um, last week is last week. Really looking forward to this week. It's going to be a big week this week. Coach Combs talked about that one after the game, how how, what, how great everything looked leading up to, you know, that catch. What, you know, how did you feel in that first, you know, game, first time to really show what you could do at that outside spot that you looked forward to for so long? Uh, it felt good. Um, been 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 looking for it for a long time, but um, at the end of the day, it was different on the field with just no fans and stuff. Um, not gonna lie about that, it's different. But at the end of the day, we, we we pump each other up on the sideline, get each other hype on the sideline. So that that's that's what's different about this year and last year. It's like the the team pumping everybody up and making sure everybody's hype and ready to play instead of, instead of the fans. Thanks, man. Up uh, next, Bill Rabinowitz. Hi, Sean. You're one of the few players that actually has experienced a whiteout at Penn State. Uh, first of all, what was that like, that experience of playing there? And, and how much are you going to miss not having that atmosphere this week? Or like it? I love the whiteout. That's, um, it's a definitely a challenge, uh, a big stage in college football, a big stage in, in our life as a Buckeye. And, um, I really was looking forward to it this year, but it, it didn't happen. But um, that's probably one of the funniest and best games that like I ever been a part of in my in my college career. So I, I really love the water. I love the competition. I love their fans just trying to ride us up and all that. I love that. I love that because at the end of the day, when we go there and we we win, it, it, it shuts them up. So I really really wish they had it this year, but at the end of the day, COVID nineteen hit, so it can't do nothing. Fun. Up next, Jeff Hall. 
Um, you were the, obviously the leader of the secondary, and Nebraska didn't test you guys deep all that much. Um, how do you feel that unit, your unit, is progressing uh, right now? Um, at first, we, we, we came in the game timid, which is a lot of players' first time starting playing in general. So I understand that, Phil. I'm glad we got that out the way. And um, I felt we was playing very well, making tackles, um, shedding blocks, and, and making tackles. So uh, we really didn't get challenged downfield, like you said. But this week is definitely going to be a challenge with um, their number five. They got three in the slot. They got 11, 13. All of them are kind of deep ball, fast guys. And, and the quarterback will throw it. So um, we will have, definitely have a challenge this week. Thanks, Sean. Uh, next, Stephen Means. Hey, Sean, I know one of the reasons you came back is for the opportunity to play outside and now that you've had a full game under your belt playing that and when you go back and look at the film, were you pretty happy with what you were able to do in that first opportunity? Um, You could say that. I know I got more in me, but you could say I was pretty happy, but I definitely know I got more in me. Um, me and Coach Collins talked and said we definitely had more in me. Um, but it, it was the first experience, the first experience outside in, in a real game, so it was fun and I, and I loved it. And I, you have a lot of experience in that slot, and you guys are playing two new guys, Marcus and Cam, there. Um, with your experience, especially within this team last year, how are you maybe helping those two guys through that one with the first and second down situations and the other guy in the third down pass situation? How are you helping them kind of adjust to that role? Just just giving them some ideas and tips that I did last year, um, playing on, playing off, when to play on, when to play off, how to guard certain people, just helping them with different tips. Um, it's definitely a different adjustment for everybody. So um, with Marcus, he might have something that feels comfortable, more comfortable than Cam or with me when I play slot. So it's different. It's a different adjustment. For What's harder, outside or inside? I, I have to wait. I have to wait to the end of the year to give you that answer. All right. Thanks. Next, Spencer Holbrook. Sean, you talked about the challenges that they uh, – the Penn State uh, outside receivers present to you. Do you do you look forward to that challenge almost as much as you do as you did last year when you were going against a team like Clemson? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but their receivers, they're they're quick and fast guys. Um, watching them from from last year to this year, they're they're definitely they're definitely different receivers, especially number five. Um, very quick guy, deep deep ball threat. You see, he had the deep ball against Indiana. Um, so. They, they got great receivers there. They got a great quarterback. Um, he, he'll keep the, keep the play alive at any time. You know, he, he can scramble. He's very, very fast. He can scramble, get out of the pocket. So, really, it's going to be a challenge for our defense in general, just not our secondary. Our D-line, our linebackers, um, they down to their third string running back, but they got all their old linemen back. So, at the end of the day, like, it, it's on the old linemen, not, not the running back. So, the running back makes the cuts, but the old linemen pushes, pushes the piles. Was it kind of disappointing for you to, as an outside corner looking to – make your name out there to have your first game be against Nebraska who runs the ball and wasn't really going to challenge you at all out there? Um, I wouldn't say it was a disappointment. Uh, all I care about is getting a win at the end of the day. So. Uh, next, Dan Hope. Hey, Sean, when you were out there on Saturday, did you think at all about how close it was to that not happening again? No, not really. Um, I was just happy to be on the field, to be honest. Um, it, it was kind of sad not having fans, but I was just happy to be back in the shoe, to play in the shoe again, um, getting the opportunity just to play with everybody, play with um, different people on the field from last year. I having Jordan Fuller, Damon Arnett, Jeff Okuda, and having just different people seeing how they, how they, act, how they react to um, when things go bad and how they react to when things go good. So it was definitely a good experience just to learn more about my teammates and a real game experience. When you've gone through, you know, everything this summer and, you know, almost opting out and opting back in, does that make you appreciate this opportunity to play more? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, just not having football in general makes me appreciate football in the game more. Um, and then having this team, having this team make me appreciate the, the Ohio State alum, Ohio State, just Ohio State in general. And then appreciate my teammates. Um, There's a lot of great players here and they're doing big things and, they're sacrificing a lot just to just to play this season. Just to, they're sacrificing two months of their life where they can't go out. They have to stay in and wear a mask everywhere just to play in two two months of a football season. So it's definitely a blessing just to be around these these type of players. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Dennis Dodd. Okay. 
Hey, Sean, um, I wonder what, from your perspective, is, is different about uh, Justin Fields this year? Oh, that, that, that vegan diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he snapped up. Um, he snapped up a lot, lost, a little, lost, lost some weight, um, toned up, and he looked good. Arms stronger. He, he has great receivers out there that he's throwing the ball to. Great old line. So it's just it's just that at the end of the day, he's, he's a guy. He's a guy. He's a dude that can do anything, and the sky's the limit for him. Is he trying to push the vegan diet on anybody? Oh, I talked to him about it. I thought about it, but I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. I'm, I'm too skinny for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. he talk, well, how about, how about leadership? Is there any anything different? I mean, we obviously know how good he is hiding the finals and everything. Mm -hmm. Taking control more or anything like that? Oh, yeah, definitely just getting a year under his belt from last year and then coming into this year, he, he definitely had to step up being more vocal, um, talking to the offense, talking to the defense. Um, but his leadership is just, it definitely has grown. He's, he's a definitely, I want to say a different person, but he adds some more characteristics to it, so. Great, thank you. Up next, Brendan Gulick. Hey, Sean. Um, Nathan asked you about the Wisconsin situation. I was kind of hoping I could build off that for a second. You know, do, does seeing how things can fall apart for a team so quickly, I mean, they had no negative tests before Friday's game from players or coaches, and then bang, all of a sudden, you know, now they're not playing a game this weekend. Does, does that kind of help you guys live in the moment a little bit better and, and just sort of be grateful for what you've got today? Definitely, definitely. We really didn't talk about it as a team yet, but um, just as a unit and talking to, like, a couple of friends and teammates, it, it definitely is a blessing just to just to, to embrace the moment that you have now. Like, it can be taken away just like that. Like, we, we talk about every, every week. We got to focus on this week, not next week or the week after because this week is the most important week that we have right now. This day is the most important day. So you just got to focus on what you got right now because at the end of the day, nothing is promised. And, and you see with Wisconsin, they, they lost three, they lost a couple of players and they out, they had to sit out for seven days and those players are done for three weeks. So you just got to, you got to focus on what you got now. You can't be ahead of yourself when you, you beat a team or anything. You still have to quarantine. You still have to wear your mask and you still have to be a grown man about your, about your work. So. I know you touched a little bit already on, um, you know, how, how you were grateful for being able to play on Saturday and, you know, enjoying working with your teammates. Do you have a moment or a routine or something that you do pregame, whether it was just this week uh, mm -hmm. or something you've done throughout your career, uh, something where maybe you take a couple minutes to yourself to just be grateful for what you have and, and, and then let all the hype of the team and all the adrenaline kind of take over from there? Oh, um, yeah. Every game, I pray at the same spot every game, no matter home or where I go to the 50-yard line when we come out and I pray. And I just think, I just be thankful for where I'm at, be thankful for who I'm playing with, um, just who my parents are at the end of the day, who, who God put me around, learning, learning different characteristics from a lot of people. And I, I, just, pray, I just pray on the 50-yard line every game. So that, that's something I routine I do that every game. Love that. Thanks, man. Up next, Patrick Murphy. Sean, you talked about your play on the outside, uh, the slot guys. How would you grade what Seven was able to do in his first major action? And then just the, the secondary as a whole, a lot of new guys out there, a lot of new faces. How do you kind of evaluate your guys' performance on Saturday, even though you weren't tested a ton? Uh, it, was, it was rough at first, but um, we, definitely, we definitely came back and stuck to it, stuck to the game plan and just wrapped up and made tackles. That's what's been a lot of problem in the college football game today. The people not been, have not been wrapping up because you haven't had camp and you didn't have spring. So it's, it's just hard to just tackle and practice when you got play in four weeks during camp and you're doing it. That's during school. So definitely was different. But with seven, seven's doing great. He's going to do great things definitely this week. Um, last week really didn't challenge us, so you really can't say nothing. Um, with, the, with the secondary hole, I know, I know we're going to be good. Um, we got a lot of smart players. You got athletes on the field. Um, you see, you see Hook, Hook is, a, is a great safety back there. He, he gets players down. Um, you see Proc can play any position. He, he, he plays safety, perfect cover safety. He play corner at my end. So we just got a lot of athletes. We got a lot of depth. I'm um, really just looking forward to this week. This week is definitely going to be a challenge for us and um, us and our D-line, and it's just really looking forward to it. And you touched on the, the lack of fans there, but you did have Coach Combs back on the sideline. How much energy did that bring to things? You know, he, 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 he brings the energy every game, no matter what. He brings it in practice, the meetings, and, and everything. So 
Um, glad to have him back. Glad to have his energy. Glad to have his coaching. Um, different things he's been teaching us since he's been back in the NFL. So just glad to have him back in June. Thanks, Sean. Next, Tim May. Hey, Sean, uh, Sean, I was just wondering, uh, you know, last time I kind of – or first time I remember this kind of thing, I call it the Sean Spring Syndrome. You're kind of out there all by yourself hoping maybe uh, sometimes they'll throw the ball at you and stuff. But what's it like now being out there on the corner and uh, people having a reputation – knowing your reputation, et cetera, and maybe just ha getting sporadic action? Um, it, it's it's fun. Um, really been looking for it. This, this is what I wanted, and this is what what I wanted, and just wanted in my future. But um, it, it's fun. Just really looking forward to this week because I know it, this week is going to be that challenge for everybody. So the, last week they really didn't throw the ball, but this week is definitely going to be that challenge. So I've definitely been in that playbook, looking at film a lot, um, talking to others, giving them tips that I feel like will help them, and um. They're just taking it day by day, like I've been saying. So just, just really looking forward to this week. Yeah, and what just jumps out at you about Penn State and their offense from what you saw from Saturday's game? You know, I don't know how much video you've actually watched to this point, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't even know if you got to watch the end of that game. I'm oh, yeah. sure you did, maybe. But uh, just what jumps out at you about their offense more than anything else? Explosive. I feel like they didn't really lose too many pieces. You know, they lost um, K.J. Hamlin, number one. But now they got number three. He's a freshman. He actually remind me of K.J. a little bit. I don't. He's probably – way more than him, but um, yeah. they really, I feel like they're the same team for last year, in my opinion, it, on special offensive side. It's like not, not too many pieces have been left. So. Thanks, man. And last question belongs to Gianna Galley. Hi, Sean. Penn State Media here. Um, you know, cornerback to cornerback, I'm just curious, have you gotten the chance to feel inspired and learn from a guy like Joey Porter and you know, is there something or anything that you've been able to sort of maybe grow with him in, in a personal connection and something you want to see from him, you know, not only in this game, but you're excited to just see him grow as a player? Uh, I'm just excited to see everybody grow, um, especially – I'm just excited for everybody to grow. And that, that that's just me in life. I, I want to see people grow and get better in life in general. So I'm definitely excited. I'm definitely um, excited to learn from different people, not, not just him. But just from different people in general, I love to learn. And I'm, I love to see everybody grow. It don't have to just be my family or somebody I know. It could be somebody I, I see from a distance and I see them growing. That's just, that's just a blessing in disguise that, that people don't notice. Like, I love to see people grow and get better in their life. Thank you, Sean. And that is it. Thank